When I learned object-oriented programming more than two decades ago, inheritance was an important element of almost every design. Today it seems to be common sense to favor composition over inheritance in most cases. So you might ask, is the Liskov substitution principle actually still relevant for my software designs? In my experience the answer needs to be a clear yes, unless you want to build fragile software. And here's why. Let's start with the definition of the Liskov substitution principle. It states, if for each object O1 of type S there is an object O2 of type T, such that for all programs P defined in terms of T, the behavior of P is unchanged when O1 is substituted for O2, then S is a subtype of T. That sounds pretty complicated. So what exactly does that mean? Here's a simple example. We have a class T and a class S which derives from T. The derived class S then only defines a new API. For this example we can easily conclude that we can safely pass an instance of class S where an instance of class T is expected without changing the behavior of a given program. Hence this definition of class S fulfills the Liskov substitution principle. Here's another example. We again have a class T and a class S which derives from T. But now S overrides the method foo defined by T and throws a not supported exception. As S derives from T, technically we could still pass an instance of S where an instance of T is expected. But even without knowing the concrete program, we can pretty safely assume that this exception would not be expected by the program and so we have to conclude that S would change the behavior of the program. Hence, this definition of class S clearly violates the Liskov substitution principle. Ok, let's change this example slightly. Class S still derives from class T and also still overrides the method foo, but now it returns null instead of throwing an exception. If we now pass an instance of class S where T is expected, will this change the behavior of a given program? Does this definition of S violate the Liskov substitution principle? When trying to answer these questions, it becomes obvious that in essence the Liskov substitution principle is all about contracts. In a design like this, the base type T establishes a contract towards its clients. This contract consists of the syntactical AP surface of T and, more importantly, its semantical behavior. The Liskov substitution principle demands that all subtypes of T must fulfill this contract as well. The importance of this demand becomes obvious when considering the consequences of violating it. For example, if subtype S3 violates the Liskov substitution principle and T gets substituted with S3, then clients of T may fail completely or misbehave in some way. That means, violating the Liskov substitution principle clearly is a recipe for building fragile software. Now, why is this all relevant for your software designs even if you don't use any inheritance at all? You might not use inheritance, but then you definitely use other concepts like interfaces and functions to define abstractions as every non-trivial software requires such abstractions in order to abstract from implementation details or to support variability or to provide extensibility. From my perspective, the Liskov substitution principle is critical in these contexts as well in order to develop robust software. Now having understood the importance of contracts, how exactly are those defined by the abstractions? Unfortunately, most today's programming languages are not much supportive here. While add-ons exist for some languages, we mostly have to rely on the documentation provided by the abstractions. In case of abstract base classes, we could inspect the implementation of the virtual methods additionally. Let's have a look at some examples of such contracts so that we can learn how to spot violations easily. In this example the abstraction defines that an argument exception will be thrown in case of an invalid service name. The implementation however throws a different exception which would only be valid if this exception would be a subtype of the exception defined by the abstraction. As this is not the case in this example, Foo's strategy violates the Liskov substitution principle. The Liskov substitution principle requires that preconditions are not strengthened by the implementation of an abstraction. Here the I repository defines that the parameter items must not be null. The document repository however also rejects an empty collection which breaks the contract defined by iRepository towards its clients and so the document repository violates the Liskov substitution principle as well. The Liskov substitution principle also requires that post conditions are not weakened by the implementation of an abstraction. 
In this example, iRepository defines that find all returns an empty collection if nothing was found. But the document repository returns null in this case, which very likely causes the clients of iRepository to fail and so violates the contract defined by the abstraction. Invariants are part of such contracts as well and must not be weakened by an implementation of an abstraction either. In this example, I set defines that implementations must not contain duplicates. The simple backclass violates this invariant as its add method does not check for duplicates at all. Another violation of the Liskov substitution principle. Adding new methods and even new fields in a subtype does not violate the Liskov substitution principle as these new members are not accessible through the base type and so are simply not part of the contract. But if a subtype adds a new API which brings the base type into an invalid state, then this would be a violation of the Liskov substitution principle again. In this example, the value property of the base type cannot be changed to the base type API. But the new API of the subtype suddenly allows altering the value after object creation. Finally, Effectively removing functionality from the abstraction also breaks the contract towards its clients, which is probably quite obvious in this example, but might not be that obvious in every case. So as a rule of thumb, empty implementations are a pretty clear indicator of violations of the Liskov substitution principle. Now that we know how to detect such violations, how can we fix those? In some cases we can simply fix the implementation by ensuring all pre and post conditions as well as invariants defined by the abstractions. The design tactic to achieve this is called design by contract, which I have explained in depth in these two videos. In other cases we might realize that an existing abstraction does not fit for all scenarios, so we need to refine the abstraction. We can achieve this by factoring out the common aspects into a new abstraction and then derive every specialization from the respective abstraction. This refactoring applies another important solid principle which I have covered in this video. Now we know how to detect and fix violations of the Liskov substitution principle, but wouldn't it be even better to prevent such violations? Here are some ideas. Instead of trusting every implementation of an abstraction to explicitly check defined preconditions, we could try to push such preconditions into parameter types. In this example, the condition that a defect ID must be greater than zero is encapsulated in the defect ID class. Another approach could be to define some kind of a test bench which verifies the contracts defined by an abstraction against each implementation of this abstraction. Of course, this approach does not really prevent violations by design, but definitely helps to find such violations fast. And here's one more approach. In this design, the abstraction keeps control over the public AP surface and ensures the validation of the contract explicitly. It then provides dedicated hooks, which need to be implemented by the derived class to provide the actual functionality. Of course, also this design is not bulletproof, but it definitely provides more governance than an AP documentation of an interface. And this brings me to the following thought. Nowadays, we usually prefer interfaces over abstract base classes because these are cheap to create, are best supported by dynamic mocking frameworks and allow multiple inheritance. On the other hand, abstract base classes offer more options to enforce contracts towards derived classes. From the perspective of the Liskov substitution principle, I wonder whether we should actually favor abstract base classes more often. What is your opinion? Let me know in the comments. In summary, the Liskov substitution principle is still very relevant for every software design. Applying it will help developing robust software, while violating it will lead to fragile software. The Liskov substitution principle is also one of the key enablers of the open close principle, which we will discuss in the next video. So make sure you subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you don't miss it. See you in the next video.